Yeah. Yep. I'm going to call the Northampton License Commission to meeting for Wednesday, April 7th, 2021. Um, the commissioners that are present are Brian Campadelli, Natasha Yakolov, and Helen Kahn. I uh, just want to announce that we are uh, audio and video recording. And uh, at this time, we're going to allow public comment. Is there any? If I would suggest using the hand raising feature um, under reaction. Okay, we've got um, Amy Wilson has raised your hand. Amy Wilson Kaling, yep. would you like to go ahead? I would love to go ahead. Hi, thanks all. I'm Amy Kaling. I'm the executive director of the Downtown Northampton Association. And I just wanted to take a minute to speak out um, in favor of the Strong Ave Outdoor Dining Plaza and to just call to the commission's attention um, that in an effort to make sure that that outdoor dining plaza works for all of Strong Ave, the DNA has committed marketing dollars and effort behind marketing all of Strong Ave as a destination. So I sent over to Annie a marketing piece that we have drafted that we're still working on that could be um, a poster, a flat card, a coaster, or whatever um, items make the most sense when we get to that point, but that we are conscious that um, there are multiple businesses on Strong Ave and we're hoping that this will be really exciting for all of Strong Ave and that Strong Ave will be a destination downtown, not just to enjoy outdoor dining, um, but to see the rest of the businesses on that street. So I just wanted to let folks know. Thanks. Thank you. Is there anybody else with public comment? If there is, can you raise your hand through reactions? All right, uh, seeing none, we're gonna move on. Um, so item number three is proposal to tempor temporarily close a portion of Strong Avenue to facilitate outdoor dining for the following rest restaurant or uh, establishments. Um, Lilo Inc, DBA, Eastside Grill, 19 Strong Ave, Local Burger Inc, 16 Main Street, uh, Think Tank, Brewers, LLC, DBA, Progression Brewing Company, Nine Pearl Street. Hello, Fitzwilly. Uh, pardon me? Help you. All right, I'll mute him. Um, Familiars Coffee and Tea, uh, Six Strong Ave, uh, the Axis LLC, DBA, Ibiza Tapas, Seven Strong Street. So who would like to, who would like to talk on this? I, I suggest starting at the top of the agenda. So starting with Eastside Grill. Okay. Can we hear from uh, uh, representatives of Eastside? Hi, this is Deb Flynn. I'm the owner of Eastside Grill. So we sent over what the um, plan should look like with um, each restaurant having its own boundaries and the boundaries are gonna be landscaped so that we'll have plants and trees dividing each um, license so that liquor doesn't go in between any of the restaurants or into a restaurant that does not have liquor. Um, uh, they are color coded. So East Side is blue, uh, Familiars is red, um, Homestead is, is maroon and Local burger, I believe, is black. Yeah, on that sheet. And we also um, uh, are going to fill everything also with plants. There will be a lot of plants that will have herbs that local, that so that we can use them to cook with. All the, the chefs who want to use them can go out there, cook them, and use them. Um, I don't know about anyone else, but I know that our hours are only going to be till 9 o'clock during the week and on the weekends till 10 o'clock. And also on Sundays, we're gonna keep it two to eight so that the condos you know, don't have to um, deal with any of the loud noise after the serving hours. I just wanna add that our sections will be managed by and through our host fans that are- Wait, wait, wait. Sure. Okay, yeah. well, 
when you speak, you need to say your name for the record and tell us oh, who you are. Um, my name is Robbie Bocon. I'm the general manager at Eastside Grill. Okay, thank you. And I, I just wanted to point out that, so our sections will be managed through our host stands and our managers, making sure that people don't just randomly walk through the street and decide to pull up a chair or, or whatever they happen to be doing, especially because of liquor licensing. It's, it's an extension of our premise, so it'll be treated as such. Okay, thank you. And Brian, um, this is Deb again. Uh, as yeah. an owner, I'm gonna be outside policing our area this year. So um, I've changed the whole way that we do usual business with hiring more hostesses to work inside and answering phones so that I don't have to be inside at all and that I can make sure that at least on our property it's managed. Okay thank you. Yep. Is it, um, Helen or uh, Natasha do you have any questions mm. regarding any of that? You're muted Natasha. Okay, sorry about that. Um, I have a general question about, um, you mentioned, Deb, your hours of operation and the residential condos. Have, have those folks been looped in on the project? Yes, I talked to their condo association president okay. and he said so far, no one has complained about it. He did bring it up at one of their meetings. Okay, great. As long as they're in the know. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Um, Local Burger, would you like to? Uh... Yes, yes. Hi, Jeff from Local Burger. Uh, Jeff McNary. Um, Thank you. So we're going to have uh, one person stationed outside manning all the tables. The plan is to have eight tables. Um, so our our host will direct guests where to sit. Um, we'll have trash bin outside, bus bucket outside for dirty baskets. Uh, so people have to, have to go back in the restaurant, uh, less walking around inside for them the better. Um, our one person will be doing the wiping up tables again and telling guests when it's okay to sit down. Uh, we'll have someone running the food from outside, inside. So yes. again, there's no uh, guests having to go back inside. Uh, hand sanitizer outside for all guests, uh, table washing station for our, our staff to wash the tables. Um, let's see. And again, uh, eight tables that we're having is the hopes uh, with uh, additional planters and uh, just make it look a bit nicer. Okay. Um, Helen or Natasha, do you have any questions? Anything um, to add? Yeah, I just had a question. Will your hours match those of Eastside or what, what will your hours be? Well, the plan was to go from 1130. Our hours are 1130 to 10 o'clock, seven days a week. Uh, we can adjust if needed. If, it's, uh, if, you know, if it needs to adjust, we can do that for sure. Okay. Great. Um, progression. Is there a representative for Hi. Progression Brewery? Yeah, Drew Starkweather here, Progression. Hi, Drew. Hi. Um, so we are, um, since we don't have a kitchen in the proximity of that end of Strong Street, we're on hold of our involvement in this due to the food requirement for serving alcohol. Um, it is our goal and hope that when the food requirement is lifted, that we could have a beer tap station, um, some umbrella tables out there, um, you know, you know, with proper sanitation, et cetera. But uh, there's, it's a very uncertain date when the next phase of, next tier of phase four is gonna take place. So we're in a holding pattern. Okay. Natasha or Helen, anything to add to that? Um, just so I understand, you're saying when and if, you know, you have the, there's the say so that you can do that. You're saying that you're going to be somewhere within this plan that we're looking at. You'll be setting up something within there. Is that what you're saying? That is our, that is our hope uh, to be included. We're on the current drawings, I believe. Right. Um, I'm missing that where you are. Are the, Am I missing it? Can someone point me to it? Are you on the current drawing? So they were, they're on the current drawing, but I think the one that you just got yeah. from Deb didn't include them because they're still in a holding pattern. Is that okay. right? Yeah. Okay. Cause I'm looking at the most recent one we got. So, okay. Okay. So I'm not sure how we, if we can revisit later or 
I mean, we really have to bow out until the food requirement is lifted. Um, so I can be involved in what we intend to do when that date comes, but I'm sure we'll have to revisit at that point anyways. Yeah, the problem with that is we are month to month unless we pulled something together special. So if you had any kind of a plan that you wanted to put on record now, so then it's, you know, maybe we could get you going if it opens up for you instead of having to wait for the next whole meeting. Um, and I'm not even sure that's possible, but just saying, I don't know if, you, if you've gone that far or have any kind of plan other than what you've stated so far. Um, haven't, and I could certainly submit for next month. Um, in my opinion, the food requirement won't be listed, lifted in the next month. Um, so I'm happy to put in something for next month for the, uh, the what if date when that does take place. Okay. Yeah. So Brian, this proposal isn't slated to take space, take place until Memorial day. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So then I'm assuming that when when we do approvals is you know that we can't involve progression in anything right now, right? Is that correct? That's my assumption. Yeah. Annie, is that yeah, I would I would go that route. Okay. And then, okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, next is uh, uh, familiars coffee and tea, six strong ads. Anybody here to represent? Uh, hi, this is Danny McColgan, one of the two owners at Familiars Coffee and Tea. Hi. Hello. Um, so uh, in terms of our involvement, uh, we do not plan on making any major changes to our current outdoor seating setup. The only difference is that the um, fencing that we have up um, to delineate the seating in the parking area will come down in favor of the barriers made by the flower boxes, which we think will help kind of um, continue the theme of kind of an open space project and a little bit more togetherness among the businesses um, that a fence doesn't quite capture. Um, otherwise, we will be operating in the same way that we are now, uh, just pushing out further into the street with additional seating. Um, our hours would be 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. currently. Uh, the latest we would really consider staying open would be eight, maybe nine o'clock on weekends, uh, pending you know, how much traffic is around, people looking for post-dinner espressos. Um, but no, I would say open no later than nine. Uh, and we currently are there every morning um, operating at eight. So there's a presence on the street kind of for a full day's worth of business and downtown living. Okay, great. Um, Helen or Natasha, do you have anything? No. Okay. Um, uh, Abyssal Tapas, do we have anybody here for? Yeah, uh, Jeremy Warther here for Rias Bikes. Hi. Can you Tell yeah. us what your plan is. Yeah, so our plan is, uh, uh, you know, again, in conjunction with the others that have communicated, ours is essentially just an expansion of the uh, currently um, allowed uh, project that we have in front, very similar to progression, or sorry, to uh, we're just going to be moving the barriers uh, that were uh, generously set up by the city um, to open up more uh, dining opportunity. Uh, essentially, we'll be adding between three and five uh, additional tables, which would give us uh, 12 to 13. Um, it is essentially just an expansion of the uh, program that we are uh, cleared for currently. Okay. Natasha or Helen, do you have anything on that? I don't. All right. Um, sorry, I guess also, I don't know if you mentioned hours, just so I have a sense of okay. when the phone's open till. Sure. Uh, we're uh, currently open until uh, nine, um, three nights a week, but uh, again, expanding our uh, days and hours. Um, you know, we, we'd gladly shut down uh, about, you know, 10 or 11 if that's uh, allowable. Um, but, uh, you know, if we need to be in con uh, congruency with the other businesses, happy to, to adjust our hours as needed. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Um, 
so Natasha, Helen, Annie, I mean, you, you want to discuss this a little bit? I mean, I know there's a couple ways to go about this. So I have uh, um, a, a few things sure. just clarity on. So the plan um, that was Deb just sent over and you know what, I'll sh I can share my screen so everyone knows. Um, so um, are those all, so for instance, East Side, are, are you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you're hoping to have seven tables? I just want to make sure the table and chair count is what you're hoping for. As of, yes, we are. Yes. Okay, and for everyone else, that looks about right for your for tables and chair count. So, with the exception of moving around, Annie, it might look a little different once you start moving things around and really putting it out there. Yeah, I just want to make sure I have recorded how many tables and chairs, just for the record. Okay. Uh, so that does so not. So that's about right. That not for familiars. I don't know if you were still talking to East Side. My apologies. Um, again, this is Danny from Familiars Coffee and Tea. Um, we currently have more tables outside than our already pictured here, as you saw in the plan I sent you for the um, current outdoor seating setup. Um, so we currently have 10 tables um, in the street. Um, that yields about 30 seats uh, between a breakdown of two and four tops. Um, just saying that that's what our current. So Annie, are you saying that you want to go through, we want to count each and, and um, verbally list it as uh, for the record? Yeah, I mean, it needs to be because there was no real application for this proposal. So I didn't get a good gist of what everyone wanted. So just for the record, so the building department knows and the health department knows when they go to inspect that everything's the way it's supposed to be. Right. So, you know, being that we just told, heard from familiars that it's already more tables. I don't know how that would change. I mean, if we're going to submit this drawing as what we're voting on, you know, do we need to redo this or do we just need to list exactly how many tables are out there? Yeah, no, it, it doesn't really need to be amended as long as I have supporting document to say that it is different from the plan. Yeah. Okay. So local, are you planning to have yeah. seven tables? Oh, actually eight if we can. Okay. Yes, yeah, five down below. We can do three above it would be great. So a total of eight tables. Okay. And um, Jeremy, one, two, three, four, five, six, six, four tops and two, two tops. I, yeah, I think that's about what would be able to fit in there. Yeah. And, and if it, if you need to add or take away some, that's, that, that's fine. I just need to get a rough general idea. Yeah, once once we actually have the proper setup and have properly measured it out in physicality, we'll we can definitely update that if need be. Okay, and then east side seven about. I think she said eight total. Yes. Seven. Is that a picnic table? There's a picnic table there. And familiar, Danny, I know you said you had 10 now. Yep, and that's uh, that's where we would stay. Um, I just wanted to make sure that was clear that the plan I had oh. said you had more than is pictured here, just 10 tables. Okay, so you wouldn't necessarily be adding tables and chairs, you would just be spacing them out? Correct. Further? Okay, yep. gotcha. Okay. Um, and then these planters in between each restaurant are those from coming from the city um no actually they're probably they are coming from lowe's lowe's is working with us and they're gonna give us a really good price oh great we just needed to know okay so those was, will... go ahead 
Go ahead, sorry. I'm sorry, I, we were just wondering if the city was going to be able to allow us to have any of the other planters so that we could just know how many exactly to order from Lowe's. Okay, yeah, I think I think we do have some left. Um, Annie, this is Amy. I asked Hi. Alan and he's getting that figure. I'm sorry, you did what? I talked to Al, I texted with Alan earlier and he's getting that. He's waiting to hear from the rec department and Florence. Great. Okay, so uh, just to be clear, the planters will be the delineation from each restaurant? Yes. And are, is the commission okay with that? Well, I mean, in the past, um, with outdoor seating, we've always had to have some kind of a, you know, plastic chain or, you know, remember when we'd walk, um, you would see all the seating out on the main sidewalks, they would have to have some kind of impassable chain. You can walk in and out of planters. You know, I don't know if we care to require that. I mean, it's pretty closed off as you go out towards Fitzwillies. So, I mean, I'm okay with it if everybody else is. I'm just saying the way it's been. You know, I don't see a need to start spending money on extra stuff. You know, I'm sure, especially if everybody's going to be outside kind of monitoring their own space, there's probably not going to be an issue. So, Brian, I think I agree with what you just said there. I think if um, people are out there monitoring the space, then um, I would like to be able to trust that because I understand like it sort of goes against the vibe, it sounds like, of what you're trying to do there. If we then we're sort of putting up fencing and roping off and that kind of thing. However, it is a valid point that Brian makes that in the past when we've had outdoor dining, especially if there's alcohol on the premises, you know, we make it clear that people can't just walk in and out of those areas. But I, I don't know how Natasha feels, you know, I'm okay with the seeing how it goes and if people are really monitoring the space and making sure that there's not people going in and out of those areas with drinks. Um, I'd like to support, you know, the vibe that you're going for with the planters. Would certainly make it easier if it was like Key West. Everybody could just walk around with their drinks. <laughs> Another <laughs> meeting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. <laughs> um, I agree um, with with Helen and Brian in that I don't think the roping is necessary as long as there's staff outside managing the the beverages and such. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, all right, um, is there any other questions or additions uh, from either Annie or Helen or Natasha? Did anybody else have anything to add? No, so uh, Natasha and Helen, I mean, how do you wanna go about it? You wanna you know, vote as a uh, whole or do you wanna do individual? Um, I think we can vote as a whole and just with uh, omit progression since they're not eligible right now for the plan. Okay. Do you want me to make a motion? Sure. Okay. Wait, sorry. One more thing. Yes. One more thing. Um, so just the timing. Um, everyone's okay with the the um, the end time at night you mean? to stop so yeah. Um that's a good well, question. I'm sorry. Uh, okay. The latest, the latest that we've heard was 11 p.m. as a possibility. I mean, is there any problem from anybody? Have, the latest closing for outside that I heard was from uh, Abiza Tapas. Is it maybe 10 or 11? Is it, you know, so if we put a stipulation of 11, is that a, does that offend anybody, or is that any issue with surrounding, um, you know, apartment buildings, things like that? I mean, I, I'm okay with 11 if. And then if people want to close at nine, they can close at nine. I mean, you know, that's up to them. Okay. I don't know. What do you feel, Natasha and Helen? How do you feel about that? Um, well, it seems pe folks had hours of operation that were weekday friendly and then hours of operation that were specific for the weekends. Okay, so um, we want to set that in our motion. We probably should. Mm -hmm. 
Annie, do you think we should have timing set in or, or wait and see if the neighbors come forward? Um, I would put it in the motion in the event that anybody does come forward. Okay. And then you can always revisit it. Okay. Yeah. I don't think anybody's going to want to be open any longer than, you know, people aren't going to be out there. They're going to want to close it up and, and head out. So. Helen, what do you think? Um, yeah, I, I like with the, the in the event um, option. Okay. <laughs> we reserve the right. That kind of thing. So 11 o'clock then? Um, well, it's, I, I wrote down the times and it seemed it was pretty consistent. 10 p.m. on weekdays, 11 on weekends. Is that accurate for the restaurants? And would you want to would you want to do Thursday included in that weekend? So Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Monday, I guess, too. I'm just saying, I don't know. Now that it's spring, are they going to get busier? And Thursday is going to be a great, you know, time, too. I just want to give them the option. Yeah. You know? I mean, I think Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I mean, Friday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday is super reasonable if you're living upstairs from a restaurant. I think Sunday with a Monday. Yeah, morning, right. That's, yeah, Friday. that's true. Sunday can be included like the during the week. Um, that's fine. All right, great. Any other questions or additions? All right. Okay, you so have... we have 10 p.m. weekdays, 11 p.m. weekends, unless there is a complaint yes. and we'll revisit. Can you just yep. specify, because Thursday isn't really a weekend. Yep. Yep. So can you just say the days for the motion, please? I sure can. Thank you. Okay, then if we're ready, I will make a motion to approve the closure of Strong Avenue to facilitate outdoor dining um, for all the establishments outlined in agenda item number three, with the exception of progression brewing for the nights of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, with a closing at 10 p.m., Thursday, Friday, Saturday, with a closing at 11 p.m., unless there are issues brought forward by the neighbors and the commission reserves the right to revisit. Just have to, sorry, just have to include Sunday. Sunday, Monday. Sunday. Yeah. I didn't say Sunday? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. I wrote it down. Yeah. <laughs> Annie, do you want me to say it all again, or do you have that? No, I'll just sing. I'll just add that you, you. Added Sunday. Want okay. to include Sunday too. <clears throat> I second that. Thank you. You're very generous. <laughs> Is there a second? Yeah, I second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Let's go. This looks like a great plan for Strong Avenue. I'm excited for the whole street. I agree. Um, yeah, can we, can we amend the motion to include Memorial Day through Labor Day? Yes. So just make a motion to amend the previous motion to include. <laughs> Memorial Day through Labor Day. Um, I will make a motion to amend the previous motion to include Memorial Day through Labor Day. Second. All in favor. Aye. And I'm just gonna take Aye. a I'm just gonna take a quick roll call, please. Um, Brian. Yes. Natasha. Yes. Alan. Yes. Thank you. Great. All right, item number four. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Good luck with it. Thank you very much. Very much. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Um, item number four, public hearing on an application for alteration of licensed premises on an annual farm winery pouring permit. Artifact LLC DBA Artifact Cider Project, 34 North Maple Street, Florence. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and make a motion to open up the public hearing. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Excuse me one moment. I need to close my door. <clears throat> At this time, is there uh, public comment? <clears throat> Um, I actually have a piece of public comment. Um, it came in via email. Uh, I just want to read it for the record. 
record. Um, it says we live behind artifact across the alley. We recently built a backyard home for our son who has a disability. Just got your letter about the outdoor space and want to know we 100% 100% we support you 100%. That's all I got. That's oh, great. And that's from um, Val, Val <clears throat> Dwight and Phil O'Donoghue, who are budding neighbors. Great. Excellent. Any other public comment at this time? Uh, either of the other commissioners add anything or we can talk about it after. So seeing no other uh, public comment, I'm going to make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> All right, Helen and Natasha, any questions, additions? Um, I just want to look at the extension. <clears throat> Oh, it's last year's. So I do have a question for Artifact. We have someone here, yes? Yeah, hi, I'm Jake from Artifact. How are you, Jake? Well, thanks. Um, so are you planning, on, I'm just trying to wrap my head around the space. Are you planning on going into the um, delivery truck area? Yeah, the, the de loading dock is partly covered and the hope is to have the first like 10 to 15 feet um, of tables. That'll be broken down every weekend. So it won't be permanently in there. It'll just be, we'll set it up and be able to move tables in and out. Okay. And then extending in, so if you're standing in front of your tasting room, the loading dock is to the left. So you're gonna go in there a little bit and then you're gonna to extend to the right in front of the next section of the building. Correct, yeah, and that section's also our section and that's the part yeah. to the right is where we had outdoor seating last year. So yeah. that part's the same. The only addition is the little bit in the loading dock. Oh, okay. I have no questions, other questions. Helen. Do you have anything? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. Um, would like someone like to make a motion on this? Uh, sure. I'll make a motion to approve the application for the alteration of license premises of an annual farmer winery pouring permit for Artifact LLC DBA Artifact Cider Project at 34 North Maple Street in Florence. A second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Do you need to do roll, roll call? call? Yes, please, Brian. Yes. Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yeah. <clears throat> Excellent. Number five, public hearing on an application for change of officers and directors and then change the DBA on annual wine malt package store license, River Valley Market LLC, proposed DBA's River Mount Valley Co-op. <clears throat> uh, at this time, I'd like to open up the public hearing, make a motion to do so. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye, great. Uh, any public comment on this? None. Okay. Seeing none, we'll uh, make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Do you need an explanation of what we're doing, Brian, or are we all set? Um, yeah, that's that's what we were looking for. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were opening up to the public. Uh, my name I, is Tom. I did. It, it, okay. It my name is Tom Miranda, attorney for River Valley Market. Basically, uh, the change in the DBA is very straightforward. They've uh, just been uh, decided to go on to River Valley Co-op as opposed to River Valley Market. And the ABCC uh, requires that uh, that be approved by the local licensing 
uh, authority uh, and sent over to them. The um, uh, change of officers and directors, because it is a co-op in the nature of the business where you have uh, members of the co-op coming and going on a regular basis, when the um, license was first granted, uh, the ABCC wasn't um, quite sure how to deal with it because of the number of individuals in the, uh, that were members of the co-op. And uh, we entered into an agreement with the ABCC that anytime there was a change of officers or directors, we would notify the ABCC and have them approve for the Corey background checks, et cetera. And we also uh, implemented with the uh, co-op bylaws that uh, number one, no monetary um, uh, attributes would go to any of the members of the co-op because of uh, uh, the amount of money that they would be spending on alcoholic beverages during the course of the year, uh, because they, there are some credits that go depending upon how much uh, you spend at the co-op. And so uh, those are not counted towards those credits. And uh, number two, uh, members would not uh, receive any uh, special treatment when it comes to sales. Sales had to be at the same dollar amount for both uh, members and non-members. And so this is just a, uh, uh, sometimes this will be yearly, sometimes it may be every other year, depending upon when the uh, directors change, the board of directors change on an ongoing basis. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's more of a perfunctory uh, exercise, but we do it when, it, when it's necessary. Great. All right, motion to close the public hearing. Is that a second? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. All, all, in, all in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, Helen and Natasha, do you have any questions? Anything to add? I do not. Neither do I. Okay, would one of you like to make a motion? Uh, sure, I'll make a motion to approve the application for change of officers and directors. And is this two different motions? Annie, is that what you said? Oh no, okay, Same. all one, all one, right? Oh, sorry, let me start again. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the application for change of officers and directors and change of DBA on an annual wine and malt package store license for River Valley Market LLC uh, to River Valley Co-op. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Roll call, Brian? Yes. Natasha? Yes. And Helen. Yes. Great. Item number six, application for change of DBA on a common VIC license, Cherry Pie, LLC, DBA, uh, Catalpa Coffee, uh, 269 Pleasant Street. Um, pretty straightforward. And N Helen or Natasha, do you have any? Uh, actually, would does anybody want to make comment on this? Uh, I don't know if anybody's here. Okay. I don't believe so. So maybe we can table that until the end. Sure, we can table that. <clears throat> um, item seven, application for new Common Vic License Cafe, uh, Balagan, 241 Main Street. Um, looks like a new coffee shop with the old green bean location. Is anyone here to speak on that? Yes, that's me. I'm, I'm Rachel Workman. We actually have a few reps on the call today. It's me, uh, my husband, Roz Gal, and um, our partner and manager, Gil Sasson. We're all here. Hi. Hello. Hi. Thank you. Um, I mean, is this pretty uh, straightforward? Do you have any questions um, about this or any, any information, Annie, other than that, all the paperwork, everything's in? Um, it's just a new common VIC license. I have all the paperwork. Um, so yeah, okay. I, I, anything, any questions you have? I don't think there are Helen. questions. Helen, do you have, or Natasha, do you have any? 
I'd love to just hear a little synopsis if you could tell us about your cafe that you're promoting. sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, so we're going to be to, to start out with and for the foreseeable future, we're going to be bringing in all of our baked goods from small oven over in East Hampton. And we're pouring intelligentsia coffee and tea. And, juice. and we're looking at, you know, eight to six for hours. And, you know, we hope to rev up from there. But that's kind of how we're starting out. And we had our health inspection today and we hope we'll open next week. Okay, great. All right. And seven days a week or? Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. Great. Would somebody like to make a motion? Uh, yes. Oh, you, you want it, Natasha? I don't, sure, worry. Make it. I don't want to step on your toes. Go for it. Okay. <laughs> I'm excited about this one. Um, I'll make a motion to approve the application for a com new common victualler license for Cafe Balagon at 241 Main Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank Just you. Just a quick You're roll welcome. call. Brian? Yes. Natasha? Yes. Uh, Helen? Yeah. All right. Good luck with it. Thank you very much. Good luck. Yes. <clears throat> Has anybody shown up for um, the Cherry Pie LLC? I don't think so. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Moving on to a review and approval of the following on-premises outdoor dining expansion applications for public and private spaces. Think Tank Brewers, LLC, DBA, Progression Brewing Company, Nine Pearl, Sangatuan, Inc., DBA, uh, Tai Tai, Notch 8, Inc., DBA, Union Street, Tunnel Bar, Platform Bar, The Deck, 125A, Pleasant Street, Sylvester's Fine Foods, Inc., DBA, Sylvester's Restaurant, 111 Pleasant Street, Fortune Creative, LLC, DBA, Oriental Taste, 41 Main, The Roofs, Northampton, Inc., 1 Market Street, very limited DBA, Fitzwillie's Toasted Owl, 23 Main Street. Okay, same space as last year. Um, so same as before, I guess we can go through and hear from each person individually. Um, yeah, I would just suggest approving each application after kind of just the, the opposite of what we did for the strong ads. Right. So after each one, we'll just we'll do a motion and approve, or not. What happened here? Okay. Can you still hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Can you guys see me? Because I lost everything. <laughs> we, we can see you. We see you. <laughs> Great. <laughs> I mean, I I can't even bring you back. I don't. Um. Hmm. Do you minimize it, Brian? Yeah, I mean, I got like a some kind of a virus uh, thing came up, and then everything disappeared. So I don't know what that's all about. So. Let me just keep checking. Oh, well, if it's Willie's, it's just a friend. Do you want to, do you want, what do you, how do you want to proceed? Um, I mean, right now, if you want to go with this, Natasha, you want to take over? Sure. I mean, I can, I can do it without seeing everyone. If you guys can hear me, I don't have a problem with it. I don't need to see anyone. Yeah, we can see you. And yeah, all right. You. Okay. Um, so Think Tank Brewers LLC, like to hear from that person, if you could state your name for the record. Yeah, this is Drew Starkweather from Think Tank Brewers. We are looking to do a repeat of what we did last year uh, on the Pearl Street side. Uh, at this point, we're not looking at any tents. We're just going to use umbrellas in lieu of any tenting, since tenting blew into the street several times. Yeah. Okay. And Drew, how did it go last year besides tents blowing into the street? <laughs> um, it was. It was honestly, it was great. It was Good. you know, people were not coming in for a long period of time, and but they were willing to be outdoors. So it was. Good. It was a godsend. So. Good. Glad to hear it. Yes. Thank you. 
I have no questions. Well, there we go. All right. Helen, do you have any questions? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, would one of you like to make a motion? Sure, I'll make a motion to approve um, the on-premises outdoor dining expansion application um, by Think Tank Brewers, LLC DBA Progression Brewing. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, sorry, um, will there be transportation on the sidewalk of alcohol? Uh, we do need to cross the sidewalk the same as last year. Yep, so just, you're just gonna need to amend that motion to include trans transportation of alcohol on the sidewalk. Okay, uh, amending the previous, <laughs> is that what I'm doing? Um, can, we also, can, we, can we also include on there contingent upon a building department inspection? Okay, should I start again? I don't know if we even got through the, the motion, so. <laughs> So I'm just going to start again um, and yeah, fill me in if I miss something. So I'm going to make a motion to approve the um, on-premises outdoor dining expansion application for public and private spaces, um, including transportation of, across the sidewalk, um, contingent upon inspection by the building department for Think Tank Brewers, LLC, DBA Progression Brewing Company. Is that it? Did I get it? A second, anyone, anyone? A no second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Brian? Yes. Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Do we have a representative from uh, Tai Tai? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Can you uh, give us a rundown of what you're doing? And a name for the reference. Um, I'm from Tai Tai, so we're doing pretty much um, the same as last year, just change a little bit of looking. Um, we also add some more barrier onto the street um, and put uh, more plants to like for protection. Okay. Anybody have any questions? I do not. I do not. Can I get a motion? Um, I'll make a motion to approve the on-premise outdoor dining expansion application for Sangtawan Incorporated DBA Tai Tai. This includes the transportation of alcohol across the sidewalk and is contingent on the building department's inspection. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Brian? Yes. Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. Excellent. We have a representative from Notch 8. Hi, this is Jeremiah from Notch 8, Union Station, Tunnel Bar, Deck Bar, Platform, Sports Bar. Um, so I want to do the same thing that I did last year into our own parking lot extending for about 255 seats and then also adding some outdoor dining down on um, Strong Ave for the tunnel bar. So it looks like about 720 square feet, um, seven tables, six people per table for 42 total seats. So it's pretty straightforward. We're going to put up a couple of tents, tie everything down. Um, right now we're operating until 11 p.m. Uh, everybody out of the tunnel bar at midnight. We'll continue with that until the food restriction is lifted. Okay. Um, outside the tunnel bar, you've got barriers and whatnot? Yeah, the city actually put the barriers in with uh, planters already. We're going to add lighting and speakers and stuff like that, but we're going to keep it at a pretty minimal out there, pretty, pretty laid back. Yeah. Um, just tunnel bar drinks, you know, heavy apps, that kind of thing. We'll have a host out there at all times. Uh, we'll obviously have to transport liquor across the sidewalk over to the, the space, but that's about it. Great. Helen or Natasha, do you have any questions? Um, I don't. I do not. I'll make a motion. Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to approve um, the on-premises outdoor dining expansion 
um, including uh, transporting alcohol across the sidewalk contingent upon um, approval by four notch eight Inc. DBA Union Station Tunnel Bar platform bar the deck 125A Pleasant Street. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Brian? Yes. Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you, folks. Have a good day. All right. Take care. Good luck. Hey, thanks. See ya. <clears throat> uh, Sylvester's Fine Foods. Hi, my name is Jillian Duclos. I'm the general manager over at Sylvester's. Hello. Um, hi, how are you? Great. Yeah. Um, we were granted uh, barriers out on the street this year by the city, um, so we're expanding outside. Uh, when we originally applied, we had asked for three parking spots, but the city was generous and allotted us four. Uh, so our application states that we'll have seven two-top tables, but with the expansion, we should be able to do eight two-top tables. Um, with the extra space that was allotted to us. So that'll be uh, eight tables, 16 extra seats outside. Um, we also will be crossing the sidewalk um, to deliver alcohol. Um, but I believe we have uh, applied for, we had seating on the side of our building last year, which still stands and allotted uh, permission for that previously. Um, and we will have umbrellas, not a tent. We wanted to have a tent, um, but the space is quite narrow. Uh, so a tent won't work. So we'll have eight umbrellas out there. And I resubmitted a blueprint to Annie a couple of days ago uh, for the record. Excellent, thank you. So Natasha you are, and Helen. You are, or you aren't on the side of the building again, I'm sorry. We, uh, we will be on the side of the building again, which I did resubmit an application, but Annie had mentioned it, it continues through the end of the pandemic. So my last year's application still stands. Perfect. Helen, do you have anything? No, I don't. Okay. Um, I can make a motion to um, approve the on-premise outdoor dining expansion application um, public and private space for Sylvester's Fine Foods, Inc., DBA, Sylvester's Restaurant, 111 Pleasant Street, including um, the extra table, bringing that to eight, and also crossing the sidewalk to deliver alcohol. Contingent upon building. Well, contingent upon building inspector and so on. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. Brian. Yes. Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yes. Thank you. Um, Fortune Creative LLC, Oriental Taste. Hi. Hello. Well, I'm Chang Hui Zheng. Yeah, I'm on the Oriental Taste. I'm planning for the uh, Three table on the sidewalk, yeah. And uh, our open hour should be week, weekday from 3.30, uh, 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. And uh, Saturday and Sunday from uh, 11 to 9 p.m. Okay. And this is the same as last year? Same, yeah. Okay. Helen or Natasha, any questions? Um, Annie, you have indicated on the agenda there's new space this year for Oriental Taste. Oh, not yet. Yeah. Yeah, they were they were outdoors last year. Okay. Okay. Can I get a motion. If possible. The city can be help us to build a barrier also, like our let's go, like a Mexico food. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll make, Helen, did you have a question? No. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion then. Oh, Annie. Oh, sorry, Annie. Did oh, you say something? <laughs> um, yeah. Was there was there any mention of barriers? 
Oh, he right. just said he would have barriers. Oh, okay, I missed that. He said he would like the city to get him barriers, but I don't think they're in place. Is that oh, true? Oh, yeah. Well, oh. No, this is... Yeah. Sad, isn't it? Am I looking what? at the map wrong? Who are you looking at? Am I looking at their map wrong? Is, are they looking for seats on the sidewalk or are they going into parking spots? For, for the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the city's not going to bring them barriers, right? Yeah, if As possible. of right now, there are no plans for barriers there. Okay. So they'll need to have their own cordoned off. Because it's, well, it's on the, his proposal is for the sidewalk. Right, so I guess we just need to have it confirmed that you're going to put up some kind of um, roping or something around those tables and that um, there's still enough room on the sidewalk when you do that for um, to make it ADA compliant for a wheelchair to pass. So I don't see measurements. I'm now looking at the diagram and I don't see measurements there. So we just need to make sure that the tables are six feet apart and that there's room on the sidewalk. Do you happen to know what those measurements are or have you done that measurement? Mr. Zhang, are you still here? I don't Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, eh, if possible, city can help me to build a very nice the best way. If not, I, I think I just just have the city table again and our front door. Yeah. And a front wall right? on the sidewalk. So what you're asking is you would like to have barriers to take up parking spaces? If possible, yeah. So you want to expand your seating? Yeah, if possible, yeah. Okay. And that's something if, you're probably gonna not, have to Yeah, if not, I, I think okay for put a three small table in our front front of the, the wall. Yeah. Annie, wouldn't he have to submit his plan to you? And DPW, if that's what he wants, or an application for that. Yeah, I, I don't. There's no as of right now. Now there are no plans to make any outdoor seating space for that spot. Um, Can that be revisited, or is it? Um, it it certainly can. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I, yeah. Uh, um, so sh should he submit a drawing to us or DPW or how has he got to go about that? No, it it go it it goes through the mayor's office. Okay. Um, he, I mean, he certainly can. I, I did speak with him about this last week, um, but we can talk more about it okay so we're gonna push but, that extra for the proposal that's on the agenda is um an application for tables on the sidewalk in front of his restaurant okay. and what i'm what i was worried about was that there that there's something cordoning off the tables from the public way right Okay, we covered that. So, well, uh, so, so yeah, I just wanted to hear from Mr. Thing that do you have plans then to put some kind of roping or something around those tables on the sidewalk? Yeah, I'm. I'm thinking to to build some uh, plastic build, like a green color around the table. Okay, yeah, there has to be some delineation from the general public to your tables. So. Quite a, not, not, not quite a, so many spaces in a sidewalk, yeah. Right, well, you can use it, rope, chains. It could be a rope, chain, yeah. yeah. No chains can be, can be okay, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think Derek Cruzana uses a chain. And just my, just to the other, issue I brought up, do we know the the width of that sidewalk there, just to make sure that with tables that it's still ADA compliant? 
I mean, I don't, is there a general width of the sidewalks that's known that, so we know it's okay? Do you know? Anything? I think it's five or six feet, um, but that's not, you don't have to worry about that. That's the point of the building inspection because okay. they check for all of that. Okay. They check for ADA accessibility, mm -hmm. making sure the tables are uh, set far enough apart, et cetera. Okay. All right, okay. can we get a motion? I will make a motion to approve the on premise. Are we all set? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve the on premise outdoor dining expansion application for Fortune Creative LLC DBA Oriental Taste at 41 Main Street. This will include. Uh, we have it open next week. This is contingent on the building department inspection. Okay. Thank uh, you. Yeah, that sounds good. A second. It's All it's right. Favor. I mean, it's not necessary. Certainly on weekends, I would. You know, during the week, it's. Okay. Keep going. We just all in favor. I did. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Aye. Okay. Aye. So roll call, Brian. Yes. Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yes. Great, thank you. Uh, the Roost, Northampton. Hello, I'm Robin Wynn, I own The Roost. Hi, Robin. Um, can you give us a rundown of what you're planning with the new space this year? Sure, um, this will be my first time having outdoor seating. Um, we're hoping to build some benches along the brick side of our building on Bridge Street um, that we can kind of affixed to themselves so they can't be taken away so easily. <laughs> um, we're gonna build them into some planters and have um, kind of plant life in between the three benches. Um, so I'm only hoping for three tables. It's not a ton of space. Um, my thought in making the benches along the wall is that the seating can be a little bit more flexible. So there might be three or four people around one table and then no one in the middle, but they're, you know, just instead of having two tops and having it be more limited. Um, so just a little bit of flexibility as to how many people can be in each group. Um, three umbrellas, three tables, and a barrier with like a rope. And I'm going to build everything. And oh, we're going to have um, staff who comes outside and monitors the tables and wipes them down and make sure people are behaving. Built-in security, I love it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh, Helen, Natasha. I can just add that our hours, um, we're going to expand slightly to be 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., uh, seven days a week. But as summer gets closer, I, we would potentially want to stay open later, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, possibly to 11. But it certainly wouldn't be any later than that. Okay. I don't, I don't have questions. I don't have questions. Can we get a motion? Um, or, actually, I do something. Can I say something before we motion? Yeah. Just to repeat what what we were just talking with Mr. Zhang about in terms of the delineating your tables because you you'll be serving beer and stuff, so you'll have that in addition to your benches and tables. Yep. We're gonna build like a little rope barrier Perfect. out front. Nice. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> okay, I'll make a motion to approve the um, on-premises outdoor dining expansion application. Um, contingent upon approval by the building department um, uh, for the Roost Northampton Inc. at One Market Street. Mm. Transportation of alcohol. Oh, uh, including transportation of alcohol on the sidewalk. And 11 p.m. There's that covered already. Uh, yeah, do we need to? I think that's part of their life. It's their the license. Hours, right? yeah. yeah. That okay. used to be our hours. We used to be open till 11, but in the pandemic, we've been closing earlier, but I hope to build back up to that. Yeah. Right. So, did I finish You yeah, need a second. <laughs> I need a second. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And um, Brian? Yes. Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yeah. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you, Amy, for your help. All right. Very limited. Fitzwillies. You're up. Here. 
How are you, Fred? Good. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. So uh, we're looking to do exactly what we did last year, uh, an additional five tables out on the street with 14 chairs, I think it is. Um, you know, pretty straightforward, as, as other folks have said, no, no change from last year. We're, we are going to be in the parking lot again, but that's currently licensed. We are going to be on the sidewalk again, but that is currently licensed. So it's my understanding that, that this, this hearing is just to be able to do the street side. Right. Okay. Any questions? No. Uh, I have oh. I have one question. I was I was listening to some of the the um, interaction earlier with the folks on Strong Avenue, uh, talking about hours and stuff, and it made me run downstairs and grab my license to check the hours currently on my license, and it says Wednesday through Sunday. Um, obviously, Am and Hoes have been open seven days a week. Uh, I checked the previous license and it said seven days a week till two in the morning. So I'm not quite sure if that was an administrative mix up or what's going on with it. I just want to clarify that to make sure that everything is in order. So you're saying your current license says, says what? It says hours of service, 1130 AM till midnight, Wednesday through Sunday. Sounds like a mix up to me. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm sure. I, like I said, I just wanted to bring it up and clarify it. I don't, not sure if this was the place I'm to, just... but here I am. Can you guys it's see? Hours of service, 8 a.m. to 2 a.m. And then it says Sundays, 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. I, I, I can't see that. I don't that. know if you can see that, but. Oh, oh, yeah. oh the, that's your. That was your temporary license, not your. Uh, that was this. <coughs> that's, that, you must have originally said those were your days. It, it's possible. I'm not sure. Like I say, I just want to make sure everything is as it ought to be. So, what are the days? We're open seven days. We open every day at 11:30 for lunch. Seven days. Okay. Serve straight through. Andy, do we need to reiterate that in a uh, in our motion, or that would be a whole different I thing? Should, I guess you should, yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to make note of something. I um, there's no delineation out front in the on the two tops, the two table, the two high tops. I'm sorry. Say that again. There's no, you have no delineation on the two tables out front. Okay, I'll get, I'll get it out there. I thought it was, but you're talking about the, the, the chain or rope. Yes. Yeah, there's nothing out there. I'll make sure that there's something there before another drink is served. All right. So the time should be seven days a week until 2 a.m.? Yes. And, and you know, honestly, we're not going to be there till 2 a.m., but, uh, I mean, the, the rest of the license says that, so I would rather it all said that. Uh, most, most nights so, will be up by 10 or 11 o'clock. So you want the license to say 2 a.m., like the, the out, outdoor dining license to say 2 a.m.? If, if it all could be the same, I think that would make the most sense. But if you folks would rather people not be out there past a certain hour, I'm certainly open to that as well. Uh, and, and and honestly, if it says 2 a.m., I mean, last last year, I don't think there was a day we were out there much past midnight. But I mean, they should run concurrent, shouldn't they? I don't know. I mean, if he's you're taking up that whole parking lot. It's not on street. You're right. on the side. So, Helen or Natasha, what do you think? I mean, I, I, I can assure you guys we're not looking to run a rave out there till two, <laughs> till two in the morning on Main Street. Right, just clerically. Yeah. I mean, you could just do it like we did everything else, and it can be, you know, revisited if there's an issue. 
Yeah, we didn't make any, we didn't have anything specific, anything specified last year. No. Yeah, we, apparently we did, because that's what, that, those are the hours on his license. The hours of license that go until two, right? Is that what it says? Yeah. His, his his regular license is until two, but the one he just showed me, I'm pretty sure is the temporary COVID license that we probably indicated whatever whatever days those those were. Am I are we not under yeah, I mean, I don't remember doing that. I don't know if it was just on the application that was submitted, and we, I don't remember us sort of stipulating that. I don't know uh, last year, so I'm not sure what that can. Be. No, that's probably. I don't think think you did. I think that's just something that he probably requested in the application. Right. I I, I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. I mean, it, it could be that when I was first completing the application, it was you know there were a lot of unknowns that. Uh, I thought, heck, I wouldn't need it past this time, but. Yeah, it, yeah, I, I don't know how it happened. So it's a simple fix, right? We can just add it to our motion. And then you can amend if you have to um, physically on a license or a copy of, or how would you do that? Just, I can I can make whatever amendments on the license as, as long as you voted on them. Okay. So Natasha and Helen, how do you feel about that? Um, just so I'm clear, I mean, right now we're just approving this area in the street, right? And the other area, outdoor areas are not part of this and they have certain operating hours, is that correct? Yeah, the other ones were till 11. Yeah, so I mean, no, I just mean in, next to Fitzwillies. Because right now, I mean, I'm looking at the application that's just for that area in the street. And you're right. saying that the mm -hmm. sidewalk and the parking lot, that is separate. I mean, in, so what I'm saying is the hours need to be consistent, I would say, amongst all those spaces. It makes no sense to have some kind of different hours on this, on these, whatever it is, five tables that we're approving today. Correct? Is that my getting that right? agree yeah i would agree if what you're saying is they should all match his original license at 2 a.m yeah so i would just say right all that for dining hours need to be consistent at fitzwillies really. right we ready to make a motion Someone knows how to say it, sure. I think so. <laughs> and I will, I'm ready to say it. My is all yours. <laughs> I, I can do it, I'll okay, do it. Okay, do it, Brian, go, go. <laughs> all right, if I trip up, Annie, let me have it. <laughs> yeah, we can. Okay. Got you. All right, so approval of the following uh, on-premise outdoor dining expansion application for very limited DBA, Fitzwillies, Toasted Owl 23 Main Street, um, contingent upon building inspector's office um, and you have to do sidewalk, correct? Uh, transportation of alcohol on sidewalk. Also, um, times matching or original license till 2 a.m. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Brian? Yes. Brian? Yes. Yep. Oh, Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. Great. Thanks, Fred. Has anybody shown up for item number six, application change for DBA on common VIC license for cherry pie? I don't think so. Okay, no. we'll keep that tabled. Um, item number nine, discussion and vote to amend an entertainment license. Blue Paws, Inc., DBA, JJ's Tavern, 99 Main Street, Florence. Um, anybody here to rep that? Yep, so 
No, he was here last meeting, remember? And then you, oh, since right. the entertainment amendment wasn't on the agenda, we said he didn't necessarily have to come because it was all discussed last meeting. And you just, we just, so we just need a vote on what you've already discussed. Okay. So we need a vote. And or if a, a it was. Well, yeah, a motion. Um, so he was hoping to that his entertainment license would allow him to um, operate between five and eight p.m. and um, have his comedy shows until nine p.m. So essentially, he wants the entertainment license to go until nine p.m. on the weekends, um, but he also doesn't want to be precluded from having certain entertainment during the week if it arises. So seven days a week till 9 p.m. For the outdoor space, this is what you, I right. believe what he was asking. Okay. Any questions? Natasha and Helen, is that how you remember it? Annie, would the license have the same caveat on it that it could be re revisited? I don't think the license mentions neighbors, but it did say that this could be revisited by the license commission. Well, that's- Yes, any license at any time can be revisited by the license commission. So we don't need to have that in the motion in the event there's complaints or anything like that. Yep. Yes, we do or no, we don't. You have that authority. Oh, we, okay. To revisit it, yes. But does it need to be in the motion? Oh, no, okay. that's just- under your purview. Okay, I just want to be mindful of the neighbors who've already raised concern. Yep. All right. Any uh, anything to add, or Helen? No. Would one of you like to make a motion? Um, I'll make it. I'll make a motion to amend the entertainment license for Blue Paws Incorporated DBA JJ's Tavern at 99 Main Street in Florence to 5 to 9 p.m. seven days a week. Second. Can I get a second? Oh, second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And Brian? Yes. Uh, Natasha? Yes. And Helen. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, item 10 discussion of current pocket licenses. The Olive Juice Company, Inc., DBA, Bista, Legra. So, Annie, do you want to let us know um, about that license since December 2020? It was renewal. Yeah, they renewed it in, in November, December 2020. Um, so, and then the World War II Club, that license has been a pocket license since before the 2019 renewal season. Um, so I, it, I, I put it on here as a prompt to discuss them and how you want to proceed with it. Has anybody, either of those two, attempted to get a hold of you in your office to tell you what their plans are? Are they reachable? Or are they not? Um, yes, everyone's reachable. Um, I, I know there was a discussion that Bistro was going to get sold, the entire license and the restaurant. I think that have has since fallen through. Um, and I don't know the plans for the World War II Club license. All right, well... I mean, it's my opinion that we need to reach out to them and ask what the latest is on, on the possible sale of Bistro. And we certainly need to get in touch with World War II. I mean, there's there's a waiting list, is there not? There's people that are interested in these licenses. And can they be sold and transferred? Yeah, it's not, it's not a, necessarily a waiting list, but, but yeah, I mean, I mean, I know, I know that some people have, or someone has tried to buy the World War II club license, but a, the sale fell through. I'm not sure why, um, but yeah, I suggest having I mean, a representative for, come to the next. For instance, everybody that was in on that lottery, 
and didn't get it is probably interested in buying one of these licenses, I would guess. Yeah, yes, it's different when it's a lottery and it's being given away at no charge versus right. a license that's being sold. No, I get it. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, Helen, Natasha, what do you guys think? I mean, I think we should reach out to them and see what their plans are, what's going on. I know that, well, let me just reiterate. I know that um, uh, with Eric, we weren't allowing a uh, pocket license to go on forever like this. So we ended up um, grabbing that one back. So I don't, you know, and I can't remember how many months that was, but we could certainly find that if we needed to. Not that it matters. I mean, the point is, is you got a pocket license, you got to decide to do something with it. So what do you guys think? I mean, I think they should come to the next meeting and update the commission. Great point, yeah. Annie, do you remember, or I know you weren't clerk at the time, but does anybody remember how long the last pocket license was in a pocket before the city took it back? Um, yeah, it was quite some time. It was Eric Shore. Yeah, was it three? I mean, it was like it was three a, years or something, wasn't it? Was it was up there. It was for that church on the corner. Yeah. Yep. I mean, the minutes are clear if we can, I don't know how accessible those minutes are, but you know, that's hard to find, but. I know that we actually stipulated back then that we weren't gonna allow pocket licenses more than six months at one of these meetings. I do remember that. So, and if it was gonna go beyond six months, you needed to come before us and tell us what your plan is. You know, you just can't sit on this, this license, so. So it, it sounds to me that uh, if that's the case, then uh, with Beast Relay Draw, it might just be a notification saying this is the stipulation and that if it goes beyond six months, you know, that we'd like to know what they're doing with it. But um, after six months, they're going to have to appear before the commission. I'm just thinking because that's just in, since December is what you're saying um, versus. But with uh, World War II Club, I think, yes, yeah, someone has to appear at the next meeting. Right. Okay. okay. So, Annie, you want to uh, reach out to them and tell them that's what we would. Yep. Uh, I will handle it. Thank you so much. Anything else on these two, or should we move on? I'm ready to move. Yeah, on. I'm good. Okay. Number 11, discussion to decide whether to schedule a public hearing to determine whether Rias, Bioxis uh, DBA, Abiza Tapas has ceased conducting the licensed business of Abiza Tapas as required by ST 2016C109 in accordance with um, Mass General Law Case 138 or Chapter 138, sorry, Section 77. So good evening, uh, Mr. Chairperson, and Madam Commissioners. My name is uh, John Shim, and uh, my firm was recently retained by Rias Taxis LLC, also known as the Visa Tapas, and uh, Mr. Jeremy Werther. And um, since my involvement this past uh, week and a half, I reviewed the company records and the past amendment applications concerning the liquor license with Jeremy. And to be frank, I acknowledge that you know there's been certain mistakes that have been made by this company and Mr. Werther regarding the license business. You know. And, and, through some background, this is like an offense, but Jeremy is a very talented chef, but he's not an experienced business person. And he erroneously relied on, you know, his business partner and, and other um, advisors. So, and just so you know, you know, prior to the pandemic, this company had employed nine, 17 workers and they had a very stable restaurant business. But you know, as we know, this pandemic has disrupted, you know, communities, businesses, and the visa topless is an exception. And just so you know, um, since all this time, the company has lost uh, one of the members. Um, Mr. Werther has lost his business partner. We'll be submitting a memo application to reflect that uh, later down the road. But you know, Jeremy's in a difficult position, and he's used all his resources, time, and effort to keep this oh, restaurant open. It's closed now, but he's trying to save jobs for some employees. And I, I'm speaking on behalf of Jeremy and the company, but you know, there are mistakes. But He's doing, you know, Jeremy's doing all his best to correct this 
and more importantly, operate, you know, the licensed premises in full compliance with the rules and regulations of, you know, this commission, the ABCC and laws of the Commonwealth. And just so you know, the plans are to reopen this restaurant as it leaves its office on Monday. And, um, you know, I think a potential cancellation for secession of a business would, would really dampen, you know, all the efforts that have been done by, you know, this community for Strong Avenue. Um, really hurt Jeremy and all all the things that he's doing lately to make everything right. So um, I know this is an open discussion to discuss um, the issues that were done, but again, um, Jeremy plans to open Monday with his employees and operate as the top of us. Yeah, thank you. Um, I mean, in our past discussions. Helen and, and Natasha and Annie, I mean, we basically, it came down to the fact of opening as a visa tapas, did it not? It I did. mean, that was, go it, ahead. Yeah, it did. And I just, just, and I'm, I'm happy to have whatever type of discussion the chair wants to have about this right now, but I think this agenda item is to decide to have a public hearing about it. And then right. that's when we discuss it more fully but again, I defer to you and Helen if it's a discussion, but it's not on the agenda to discuss it, right, Annie? So we can't. Well, I guess my I question mean, is- Well, it, <clears throat> the agenda item is to discuss and to decide whether or not to hold the public hearing. Okay. So it's not, it's not, the, it's not the public hearing to determine the outcome, but it's, right. it's basically the, the and to determine whether or not to hold the public hearing. Right. Well, I guess my question is then, do we even, if if this is what I stated and why, do we even need a public hearing if he's agreeing to operate business such as the license already states? Why would there have to be a public meeting? Because he's not agreeing to do that. Did you, did um, John, did you just not say that you're opening as a business office? That is correct, Mr. Chair. First, and Madam Commissioner, um, that is correct. Uh, Jeremy's taking all the steps that the restaurant will be offering as a visa top us on Monday. Now, so, is it to stay that way? So, as I understand, um, Jeremy right now is going to run in full compliance. So, it will be a visa top us. Um, there's discussions which, again, uh, Jeremy and I are having about if there's a decision to change the concept. It would be an alteration of premises, essentially, which would require, you know, uh, advertising, you notice know, of butters and such. But for the time being, um, Jeremy, and he can speak for himself as well, um, when the business reopens and operates, it will be a visa topless. Again, uh, we do have to file an amendment application because one of his business partners has left. So we need to reflect the change in ownership of that. And that just happened. It's actually still an ongoing process, to be completely frank, but that will be forthcoming. Um, as well as changing, you know, removing a manager. Uh, it'll be a multi, multiple amendment application. But um, while we're still discussing that portion of it, you know, maybe there may be an alteration premises, but until that application is filed, it will be run as a visa topless. So again, my question, if that's the case, do we need to have a public hearing until the application is filed. Application for, for I, get, I, I didn't understand what you said about an so, alteration of premise application for, <clears throat> for what? So I think I can, oh, go ahead. Oh no, Mr. Cr Mr. Chairperson, please go ahead. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I, I understand what you're trying to say is you're going to comply completely with the license the way it states and later at a later date because I, I believe it's called homestead is that correct you're going to want to try to change the name to that that may be a that would be how that would be uh, according to your your applications for a change in premise yes. that's what you're talking about correct that is correct right instead of you know um not to bring up uh, i'm sorry that doesn't that doesn't sound like a alteration of premise application no it's not 
that's it's actually a change of concept. Change of DBA. But it, again, it, it would be a change of DBA from Ibiza to Homestead or vice versa. So as I understand the special act, um, and I don't want to get into too much detail, but um, part of the decision making process is a certain um, unique um, aspect, which is which grants that you know over quota license. So again, um, Jeremy and I haven't decided about the next steps in terms of in terms of an alteration of premises or a change of DBA. But until that time, you know, we make a decision or he makes a decision. Um, it will be operating in full compliance of how the license was granted. Right. So again, my question is, do we need a public hearing for that to happen until they decide to bring to the table um, that they want to change that license? I, I say, I mean, I'm maybe if I'm stepping out of bounds and I'm and I don't know uh, law wise, but it would make sense to me that you know, you have a license in states you can run the way it's uh, it's written. You you do that. If you want to make a change, you need to come before us, and then we handle it as needed at that point. Am I right or wrong in that? I agree with you, Mr. Chairperson. If that helps, um, Madam Commissioners, um, of course, you know you're you're here to you know discuss with uh, Mr. Chairperson about that. But I'm in agreement with that statement. Annie, what are you thinking? How could you tell? I was thinking. <laughs> oh, I can tell. <laughs> so you're saying you're saying that no public hearing needs to be held until until what? Well, what is the what's what's the stipulation of the public hearing for violation? I don't I don't understand. Uh, well, let me just see. Conducting licensed business as the bees of tapas. I mean, he's been granted. I guess what I'm trying to say is he's been granted a license for a visa tapas, if they're gonna to continue to run um, that way, what's the problem? Until he comes before us to change the name as we, you know, we've all discussed in, in the past. In other words, it's just buying time, in my opinion. So, Mr. Mr. Shin, you're saying that the so the homestead um, sign is going to come down. It's going to be marketed as a visa tapas. Everything's going to be changed back to a visa tapas. Yes, Ms. Lesko. As I understand, Section 77 of um, Chapter 138 is a cancellation when the, the business, the licensed premises, ceases to operate. But in this instance. Business hat won't cease to operate. They'll continue to well, we resume operations on Monday as the licensed premises is currently been granted that license as a visa topless. Uh, I'm just wondering, Jer you? Jeremy, are you willing to talk to us about what that's going to look like on Monday and how that's different from what's in, what it's been? Yeah, as as my representation is, has stated you know we're gonna we're gonna rebrand ourselves to be in compliance uh, you know we're we're trying to figure out the best ways to come out of this pandemic uh if you know if going backwards for for a period of time is is what will allow us to hopefully move forward um you know that's a decision that we've had to make as a as a business um you know are, are, are we in love with it absolutely not but you know we're we're, we're trying to be in compliance we're trying to, you know, add add to our community and be a, you know, an, a, an upstanding business in, in this, you know, downtown district. So you're in reading this again. You're saying, uh, Annie, we're saying to, to decide whether or not uh, a public hearing was needed to, you know, whether or not they cease doing business. But I mean. You know, I mean, I guess they closed for pandemic reasons. I mean, didn't Sylvester's, did we get official notice that people were closing um, when they did? No, so it's, it's, it's that they, he, they ceased doing business as a tapas as gotcha. it's required as part of the special legislation. Gotcha. Right. 
And the whole premise of the special it, yeah, it, does, it had, doesn't have yeah. anything to do with closing doors because of the pandemic or or closing for weeks or yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So uh, I guess you know we'll decide whether or not. I, I mean, do we? That's what we're discussing. Do we need a public hearing then? Because if he's going to open and change the sign and go back and it's all going to be a visa tapas, do we need a public hearing about cease to? um doing business as the granted license states um well this doesn't directly answer that question i mean i just need to say that um i hate all this i hate all this for you jeremy i mean this is like a little bit heartbreaking you know i do not want to see you change the model of your restaurant because of this technicality and i know that we've been i think it's been over a year you know that we've been talking about this and um you know and every time and and i think you if you've read minutes or been at it it's it's hard for all of us to even discuss this because we don't want to do damage to any business in this city but then at the same time we have to look at the bigger picture of like fairness to other restaurants i mean we've been through this a million times because you know when other restaurants have closed that have had these licenses they just immediately revert to the city and then they're up for lottery and so and this is something that I think we all acknowledge that years ago, it, it maybe was mishandled the way that that transferred directly. Um, I uh, sort of hate that, you know, you're feeling like you have to jump through this hoop and completely rebrand what you're doing. You know, I mean, you've been come to be known and loved as Homestead. Um, and, I, and I don't know what the solution is. I would like to <laughs> wish that there was some other way. Um, I know we on the commission talked about also, you know, discussing with you. I mean, I know you're aware of there's other types of licenses and that, you know, now with wine and malt, you can, it, you can expand it to cordials. And there is certainly some wiggle room in there in terms of the, you know, expanding the types of drink offerings. And, and I know that we had started to discuss that last time about if that's an option for you that in the, you know, that we wouldn't just yank the alcohol license that there'd be this timing in which you could maybe switch to this other type of license. And then of course, put your name in the ring for, for the, the license that would go back out to lottery, which of course doesn't guarantee anything. But, and, and I don't know, and this, I feel like I've, you know, we've gone round and round and I don't have a solution, but, I, but and I don't know, I guess I just wanna state that I, I just hate the idea of you completely rebranding into something that you're not just to hold on to this sort of technical issue um you know so it, it has not been easy <laughs> yeah <laughs> the, the the choices and decisions have not been easy but you know we're attempting to do what we need to do to you know uh fix the situation or at least become compliant for you know whatever occurred over the past uh, you know period of time you know my 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 goal has always been to be you know the best business person I can be, and that means being in compliance with all of the rules and regulations of our of our municipalities, uh, whether we like them or not. Yeah, I, Helen, thank you for I think you put that all really succinctly, and it mirrors what we're all feeling. And and you have done everything. You know, it's clear, Jeremy, you've done everything to try and be doing the right thing. And I think that you did sort of land with a little bit of a raw deal with this technicality and. Um, I, I appreciate the thoughts, uh, you know, from all. You know, it's uh, just trying to just trying to find a way to the other side, which you know we've been, you know, fortunately had good, some good practice over the last year. Yeah. yeah. Um, is it even an option for you? I mean, the the idea of a wine and malt, you know, which of course is a much lower fee and buy-in. Um, you know, with the cordial's license, is that something that would work with your homestead model? Without getting yelled at by my legal representation, I've thought about all of the different pathways, uh, whether you know they're actually succinct or not, to be able to continue moving forward in our current location setup, etc. Uh, you know, only the future really knows that answer. Um, we have I've done my due diligence to you know to look into all the avenues and. You know, as, as uh, my attorney just mentioned, you know, I, I did bring them on recently to try and find more pathways or, or more or, you know, do more due diligence on all of the uh, 
on all of the hopeful options that we can discover. Mm -hmm. so I may add something if that's if I have permission to do so. So this alcohol license uh, under the special act of 2016 under chapter 109, the only restriction to this license is that it either be in the central district or the Florence business district. There's no restrictions on transferring as long as all the proper steps are taken, such as an application transfer license. Or if the license was uh, rescinded or canceled or returned, the license still exists to a new applicant as long as it's in the central business district or the Florence business district. That's how I read the special act for which this license is issued. But so the city solicitor reads it as it was given to those for specific entities and they cannot it cannot be transferred to anybody else who's not doing business as the LLC in the license and the DBA or excuse me the LLC identified in the special act and the LLC or the DBA in the special act. Yeah I'm not here to um, argue against the state solicitor or argue against the merits of that. I'm not either I'm not in a position to do so. But, um, um, but you know, just in my experience with these special act licenses, there are there's a reason for three subdivisions. There's one, which is the subclause A, which is actual grants. And subclause B gives um, permissions and restrictions to transfer. And grant uh, subclause C is what happens when those licenses are revoked or canceled, what may be issued to a new applicant. And that's why those subclauses exist. But again. For all, for all intents and purposes for this hearing or this discussion, um, Jeremy's going to operate the business as the license was granted to. It's going to be full compliance. The license premises will be abused with office. And once um, the paperwork for the ownership uh, matter gets resolved, there will be an application at least for that to reflect um, you know, the removal of his former business or still business partner, but not formally done, and the removal of the manager, the LLC manager, once all that's finalized, executed. So uh, I feel like, I don't know, I might get in trouble because, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> and I know this is all being recorded, um, oh. which is fine, but um, because it's a, something that I brought up at a previous meeting, which was also recorded. Um, was and this is maybe Mr. Shin what you were getting at I'm not quite sure but the that it does say that you know if it ceases to exist like that then it comes back to the city it does not then specify how it is redistributed um, traditionally what we've done is we've held a lottery people put their name in the hat we do the lottery and then we um, redistribute the license I did bring up um, that legally um, and then there's issues of ethically and morally and all that that you know the commission potentially could say, well, we're going to redistribute it in a way we see fit. Oh, which is, and I, which is, and maybe you know where I'm getting at, which is that I think technically, officially, legally, if the license came back to us, we could say, and now we're redistributing it to Homestead. I'm putting it out there. I, and I don't, you know, I mean, there's three of us here. Um, well, Helen, um, to build on that, and I'm glad you kind of, you know, um, jumped into the shark infested waters first. <laughs> I'm going to join you. Um, what I was thinking in this entire time is, you know, I can't remember, Annie, maybe we can talk about this a little bit, but did we determine um, under a different, uh, you know, commissioners, was there in the transfer, was there some kind of um, mistake made by the commission? You know, and, and did we do something that, you know, did we not, you know, dot our I's and cross our T's? Because I, I kind of, what I was thinking exactly what Helen was thinking is, you know, hey, listen, if we didn't do this transfer right or it, and it was allowed to happen or whatnot, I'm, I'm not sure because I'm not uh, up on those minutes, um, uh, you know, but exactly to Helen's point, wouldn't we just take it, reissue it, and be done. If I may, 
Say I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. The only, the only restriction I see is that it has to be in the central business district or the Florence business district. Those are the only restrictions I see in the special act. Um, so if you did help the lottery, hypothetically, and the applicant was outside those districts, then that defeats the purpose of this special act over quota license for this particular character of this neighborhood of those neighborhoods. So um, granted, what's fair is, you know, there's a lottery system, of course, but do you keep picking applicants until they fit that criteria? To me, it's, um, and as I interpret it, and I'm not here to, you know, um, argue against someone who's, you know, the city solicitor is not here, but um, my argument is that the transfer or a new license can be issued as long as it meets those criteria. So it's not like the license ever disappears. It's still, right. held, it's still held by the commission with approval with the ABCC, but the local licensing board, which, which you all are, is that all the formalities have to be, you know, followed. You have to file the appropriate application. You have to file, you know, the DUA certificate. You have to file all the, you know, the financial, you know, supporting documents, the floor plan. All that has to be met, of course, and notifying the butters and such. But the restriction is, is that it can't be outside those areas. I, if if I could speak, I totally appreciate what you're saying, but I think for the commission side, we we have the opinion of the city solicitor. Who do differs in his interpretation of of this special act? Um, so just to bump back to what Brian, what you were saying about when this license this license was lottery license was given to Ibiza Tapas, I was not on the commission at that time, but I do recall reading in the press when it transferred, and I use that term lightly from Rias Bashas LLC Ibiza Tapas DBA Ibiza Tapas to then seven strong, the license commission knew that that was being done by a very thin thread. And it was, you know, even reading it in the press, I remember thinking that isn't really the spirit of how it was issued to have it transfer in that way. So if we were to look back in time and talk about what it means, you know, now to say, well, the commission made an error at that time and allowing it to happen, then how do we correct that now? I think that's a conversation that we can have that doesn't get into the weeds of attorneys interpretations of the special act, because we know how the city solicitor interprets it. I know how I personally interpret it. And I, I, I'm in line with the city solicitor that it, it was issued to Rias Bashas LLC, DBA, Ibiza Tapas, end of story period. And, and again, none of this is on Jeremy's shoulders. He's trying to run a great business um but i but maybe that's the area the the direction that we can go in to talk about it that combines both what you're saying brian in terms of what the previous iteration of the commission had done and what helen has been saying jumping into the shark tank of it, do we have an opportunity to make this right and i'm just going to say i'm leaning heavily in that direction i just because we've been beating around the bush for so long yeah. Um, and I know I can look at like, what are all the repercussions of this? And, um, but I, I think there's a recognition that it's sort of like you've started this business with the assumption that you have this operating liquor license. You've been running that business for quite some time now. And now we are, and, and whether, however it was done, you know, and neither of us were on the commission. I'd also like to say when, when that happened, but, um, Thank you. Yeah, but but it's, yeah, sorry, Brian. But um, <laughs> that was new. The three of us were not. <laughs> um, but that's neither here nor there. But anyway, yeah, I do. I I think there would be this greater recognition in the community, and that's sort of part of it, you know, with the other businesses about what happened here and how it's a, this effort to make it right. And I am hoping that by doing that, we wouldn't be setting some kind of precedent to say oh, this is how we're going to do it with all these these lottery licenses. I mean, I hope that's not opening up some door. But I am maybe openly now making this proposal that we do it in a way, and I don't even know if what the paperwork is, but if it sort of has to look like it was given back to the city, you know, we realized that there was this problem, and now we're reissuing it. And we're not doing it through a lottery. We are doing it directly. Are we I'm all for righting a wrong. Number one. Number two, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we have the authority 
to do as we wish. And if it gets explained that way, you know, I don't see, I mean, there might be some pushback by other businesses in the area, but you know what, too bad, because at the end of the day, this license was, it was purchased, you know, with the, with the business. And the gentleman thought that he was, I mean, like you said, it's no fault of his to, to, to be here where he's at. So is there some legal way that we can do it without being, you know, obviously we can't break any laws, but if it's within our, our uh, jurisdiction, um, and we have the power to do it. I mean, we can discuss that, you know, because I think, I think that's the right thing to do, especially if we, uh, we came up wrong or this commission, not including you too, um, <laughs> did this, um, you know, back in the day, we're going to call it back in the day. Wait. <laughs> Before time, Brian. Yes. <laughs> we, yeah. we don't, there's no rule book that comes with our roles here as licensed commissioners, and we rely so much on precedents, and we really do that, I think, to be fair, you know, to so that there's yeah. consistent application of, of you know, we're applying, we're, con, we're just being consistent, and I think that's really important, and this, this is the only time this weird thing has happened. Um, and it has ramifications that are really quite serious, I think, for a business owner. And it's, um, I, I don't feel as, I don't feel as aligned to this precedence as I do elsewhere as a guide in terms of how to handle this. And I, I think, you know, we do have the authority to. Right. So that's a great point. Ramifications. What are the ramifications on this commission if we right or wrong? Legally, I don't care about the rhetoric or what people think or say, but legally, is there anything that can come back to the city, us, anything? So I guess, Annie, and, and is this something that, so a couple things, it sounds like time is of the essence, if this is the direction we're leaning, because it turns my stomach, Jeremy, to think that on Monday you have to open as something new and different or old, um, but you never were. Um, but so time is of the essence. And then the question is, if we all agree and we say we're going to do this, then is this the city solicitor that needs to chime in and say, this is how it can be done. Not frankly, whether it can be done, but this is the process. This is the paperwork, whatever it is that needs to, to happen to make this happen. Is that where we'd go next, Annie? And, and of course, and I don't know if we need to make some motion right now or, or what's happening. I know we're sort of off script with the agenda and I hope none of that's a problem. Well, I will sort of bring us back to the agenda item itself was the discussion was around having a hearing about whether, right, about whether or not he was doing, doing business as a visa topless. If we just go back to the agenda item and say, okay, here, you know, we're going to discuss this in a month. In the meantime, talk to attorney Seawald, see how this needs to be done in order to write what I think the three of us agree was a wrong, raw deal. Um, and in the meantime, does business continues with Homestead as it has, because we're going to come back in a month and have this hearing about I agree. this is happening, right? So then maybe there's no need to. I don't want to see. I don't want to see him change his sign and everything. I, I feel like, to your point, if we have our ongoing investigation on this, so to speak, <laughs> keep rolling the way you're rolling until we determine different. That's my take on this. I'm, I don't know how you guys feel. It's torture to continue to have this conversation about this issue, and yes. we're here for that. I mean, this is this is we're this we're here to do hard work sometimes, but we just have to rip the bandaid off. And I've, it's been caused a lot of anxiety in terms of which way that bandaid was going to go. And I think that maybe we could do it in a much better way. Agreed. Oh, I just appreciate the open dialogue that's going on. I think it's wonderful that. You look at you know, balancing the fairness versus you know what's what you're bound to as a local licensing authority. But I think it's refreshing that there is this dialogue, and I'm, I'm sure Jeremy will attest this. You know, I think it's I think it's great. Yeah, I, I do thank you. The, uh, the dialogue, the openness, the transparency, and and the uh, you know well wishes, I guess, if you want to call them, you know what what they are. You know, I, I deeply appreciate it. it. Means a lot as a as a business owner and. Um, you know, again, I'm just 
trying to do what the best I can for, for the community, whether that's going backwards or, uh, you know, trying to find a way to move forward. Um, <laughs> Jeremy, we're all pro business. You know, this, this commission is, uh, um, built on the success of all you guys in our city. We want, we want you to really thrive and do well. You know, that's where we're all coming from. So it's appreciated. Yeah. No, this is not a hard, this is not an easy job for any of the three of you, Annie, I'm sure you're <laughs> looped in just as well. And, you know, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough, uh, you know, it's a tough bounce that we've all kind of had to, had to find, you know, which way it's going. So. So in the interest of moving forward, um, does this become an agenda item? Uh, you know, we reach out to Seawald and everyone we need to, and this is on the agenda next month. He opens and runs as um, he has been until we can uh, close in on what we have to uh, finalize. Is that in agreement? So what are you hoping to have on the agenda next month? Well, I mean, I would like to actually have Seawald, or, you know, and, and answer those questions. What are the, um, uh, what's the rebuttal on us? You know, what's the, um, you know, is the ax going to swing on, on this commission or the city if we take this license from Ibiza and, and reissue it, you know, because of a mistake that was made uh, in the past and we reissue it to Homestead. I mean, what are the... Uh, Can I ask for clarity what, what wrong you were, you're looking to write? I don't know if there was. That's when I brought this up, you know, and I know that we've talked about this several times. Um, you know, I'm not quite sure. That's why I said I'm not familiar with the minutes. I just know that this has been a, a thorn um, for a long time, and I don't know if the commission did something or did not do what they were supposed to, and um, I don't know. You know, I, I mean... I, I'm very familiar with the minutes, and I don't think... I don't see a wrong that was made by the License Commission. Okay. I, at first, it was issued to Ibiza, and then they came and asked for it to be... Uh, uh, transferred to seven strong and the license commission said no and then it went back to Ibiza and now we're here okay so I think I speak for the three of us when I say we contact Seawald and what is what what is our ability to take that license and, and cancel it out and re um, reissue it to Homestead go ahead go ahead Natasha um, just to Annie, I think one of the things that occurred at that time was the the license, the Strong Avenue people came forward and there, there, was, there was the continuity of ownership was that Juan, who was the LLC, Riaz Bashas, open to be Zatapas, maintained ownership into Seven Strong. And I think that was what the license commission held on to is, is what legitimized this transfer in a big way and then required them to continue to do business as Ibiza Tapas Seven Strong. Rias Bashas never continued. Juan didn't stay on. He sold his, his portion of it. So at that point in time, really, I think the license commission should have said, okay, this is a, this is a game changer at this point because they, they weren't doing business as Ibiza Tapas. So that's where the mistake was made by the commission. Not not they, during not during the minutes of the time when we did the transfer, but by not acting on it when the gentleman left, right? Well, for me, that was as an observer on the sidelines. That was one of the things that I thought, you know, and I knew that Juan didn't want to continue in the restaurant business anyway. So it was kind of a setup almost to try and smooth things over to to get the the new plate, new ownership, and a new restaurant open to get the sale, right? Yeah, because how could he get out of the game and sell a restaurant without a liquor license? Yeah. yeah, so my all right, so my question still stands. Uh, what's the repercussions of this this commission? You know, not maybe it's not our mistake. We're, you know, it's not. That's great. But, you know, here's a guy with a restaurant. It's not to his own fault. You got one that, that exited and it was always his plan to exit. You know, or if we right a wrong, 
not ours, someone else's, it doesn't matter. We have the authority to do it. You know, I mean, except for the rhetoric of uh, the strong Avenue people or whoever, I mean, is there any rebuttal from the state, ABCC or anybody else? Well, and something else I think we need to consider strongly is does this, does this would doing something like this impair our future ability to get over quota licenses because of how the city interprets the, the uh, transfer of them? You know, they're, they're and, then, and the only, yeah. I, I also ahead. just keep in mind that there are other licenses under this spe special act that, so you have two other licenses. Well, there was, well, there's now three because remember Sierra Grill who, who I mean, he would have loved to sell his liquor license, but wasn't able to and gave it back to the city. Um, yeah, and then he's not, the other, but he's out of business. He's, he, he's out of business. Right. He didn't, he's not like Jeremy, you know, in doing that. If I know, but maybe, I mean, he probably would have liked to sell his liquor license to somebody when he went out of business. Right. I, but I think all that stuff is sort of retroactive. I mean, so in terms of when I talked before about, oh, are we setting some precedent? I, I am not concerned about that because I think, frankly, our eyes are open wider and we would recognize if something like that was going to go on with any of these special act licenses. I think we would intercept immediately if something like what happened before was about to happen again. And also, you know, with this, um, Jeremy is not then allowed to sell the if he were to close or sell or whatever to someone else, we would recognize that we were immediately taking that alcohol license back in this case. So, but but I know, but I know that's sort of what's been prohibiting us in the past from just doing this is because it's there's these other special act licenses out there and we can't, we don't want to keep playing with them or playing with them the way that it appears that this has happened. But so oh, devil's this advocate. Is, this is a special case. Devil's advocate to Natasha's point earlier, Juan stayed on board just so he would have a, a buyer, and full well knowing he was going to leave and knowing the rules, and you know what I mean. So that's kind of a shady deal, you know. Whether the current company was aware of that or not, I mean that's that's not cool either. So you know, I don't know. We got a, I guess we got a hard road here, so. Well, I guess the only thing, if I may add one, more, one last thing. When there's a change, I mean, the entity itself still exists. It's never changed. Rios Box, just LC, that has never changed. Entities still exist. It's the same EIN. It's the same entity that's organized and in good standing with the Commonwealth. So when the previous owner left and he sold off his ownership interest, not there wasn't a transfer of the license. There was just a change in the selling of his of his ownership interests. So the entity's still there. So, you know, in my opinion, you know, had I been broad board a year ago, I would have done things a little differently. But looking at it now, there's no difference in terms of the, the entity that had the license in 2016 to the entity now. It's still the same. It's still in the central business district. The license, the location hasn't changed. None of that. Um, Let me ask you a quick question, sure, sure. if you don't mind. What if, okay, so say Jeremy's, you know, Jeremy has another partner and the whole interest in it and, uh, or, you know, it was Juan, but what, what if Juan didn't just leave? What if a partner dies and you want to still run? You still got to run under the same given name in the license though, correct? So it depends on what the, the, the operating agreement is if partner dies, does the interest go to the other partners or a buyout? That's you know legal lease stuff, but the entity still exists. But yeah, so it still doesn't change it. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if Jeremy's partner dies or doesn't want to do it anymore, like we have going on, we still have to file an application, an amendment showing that Jeremy is no longer this percent, but he's going to be hundred percent. That still requires right. an application. We we understand that. And so then, we can amend the players, but we just can't amend the, the title. Again, I'm not trying to argue against the, the city solicitor, but um, I don't think there is a restriction on changing the player as well, as long as it fits within the central business district. But in terms for, you know, for, for this hearing, and my advice to um, my client is that 
if he complies as it was in 2016 as when the license was granted and I'm not, I don't want to say buy his time, but if he's in full compliance, then there's no reason to have any further hearing or a public hearing. Right. The only so, the only reason I said buy time is because if his plan is still to change to homestead, you know, further down the road, that's, you know, and you just say, okay, well, I, I have no choice but to operate under the name that's given on the license now, but we're going to try and change it. I mean, that's all I meant by that. So. No, I appreciate that, Mr. Chairperson. What, what I'm what I'm saying is that, and I alluded to an alteration of premises, that's a, that's, that also entails cosmetic or concept changes, not just remodeling or changing the floor plan. I mean, that's my understanding. And again, I'm not here to argue about that aspect, but, you know, if Jeremy doesn't have, or his business, the company doesn't have a, an all alcohol license, it's, it's not gonna be able to operate. You know, um, you know, employees will lose jobs, the business will not succeed. It's already, Every business is struggling, but could you imagine the impact it'll have on that area, like Strong Avenue, all the other businesses? If you can't run this business and generate X amount of revenue, the business is going to fail. Then we don't have this problem. Then you get the license back. But he's doing everything he can right now, and he's agreeing to you know, running a business the way he doesn't want to, but he's invested in this community. I mean, he's invested to his employees. So, yeah, we're we're 100 with that. Yeah, we get it, and uh, that's why we want to. It sounds like it sounds like you need to argue with Seawald. Well, let's. You know? let's Can I assume yeah. that's the city solicitor? Yeah, <laughs> that's what we need. Two two attorneys just arguing, right? <laughs> let's. Yeah, that's, sorry, go ahead, Natasha. No, I was just going to suggest we just decide to pick this up at the next meeting with attorney Seawald's advice based on all the questions that Brian brought up in terms of any ramifications against the city. I'd be curious if this would impair the city's ability to get over quota licenses in the future. And are do we really truly have the authority to do what we want to do with this issue? Yeah. And in right. the meantime, just it's, we'll just carry on like we were all doing a month ago. <laughs> and, That's right. And, but we do have a goal, I think should really have a stated goal to finish this, you know, at the next meeting, if we can, because it's been a long time. Yeah, Groundhog Day. Yeah. But yes, so, I mean, and so Jeremy, that's understood then where so I don't know what changes you had planned and how far along you are, but what we're essentially saying is don't do that. <laughs> a clarification on just kind of, you know, status quo -ing. That would be great. You know, I, I'm happy to make the changes if, you know, if the commission so decides, you know, that that's really what needs to be done. Um, and I'm ready to make those changes. Uh, but, you know, if we can carry the status quo. That's, you know, one less thing that I, you know, have to worry about here as we try to reopen into the, the outdoor dining season. Um, yep. Yeah. All right. I think, I think all the commissioners feel good about this. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I appreciate I really, again. I appreciate the uh, the dialogue, the transparency, and the uh, and the openness. So thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. <laughs> All right. So um, I guess we can circle back to item number six: application change the DBA on the Common Vic license for cherry pie. Anybody show up for that? Nope. So do we need that person here to move forward with that, to hear a plan, or do you have all the paperwork, insurances, everything that you need? Anna? I have everything I need. It's up to it's up to you guys. I mean, it's it's mostly administrative and paperwork. So yeah. I, do you guys see any reason to table this till next meeting or can we just get through it? I don't. I'm fine with approving it now. Yeah. Uh, you want to make a motion? Uh, yeah, I'll make a motion to uh, approve the application for change of DBA on a common Vic license for Cherry Pie LLC DBA to Telfer Coffee at 269 Pleasant Street. Sorry. In a second. Sorry. 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 Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, quick roll call, Brian. Yes. Natasha. Yes. 
and how it. Yes. Okay, great. Um, approval of minutes. February third, two thousand and twenty-one. Yes. Should that I was a motion. That was a motion. Oh, that was motion second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, approval of minutes March 18th, 2021. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And any new business? No. Not for me. No. Okay. Dinner time. All right. So. Motion to adjourn? Second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. <laughs>